G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Monday morning here in Australia and that means it's sort of Sunday, you know, night, sort of very early Monday morning over in the States and we're all waiting to see what's going to happen. Now, it did get down to 43,000 uh, and has bounced back pretty well. I am starting to somewhat suspect that maybe we have seen the bottom. Maybe that kind of 43,000 uh, was really the bottom. Who knows, I could be wrong, but we'll get into some of the news stories and it makes me think that that's all this was. It's just a simple correction. Uh, I mean, that's what I thought all along, but there's some news stories that will basically back that up. This isn't the end. There is a long way to go in my personal opinion, not financial advice, and this is just a healthy part of a correction. And there are a number of coins that are already starting to bounce back, but look, they have been bouncing back after they go lower but they don't quite get up to new highs and then they go lower again. So we'll just have to wait and see. But let's have a look. All right, $1.45 trillion. So still hanging well above that trillion dollar mark. Now Bitcoin itself, its market cap is under a trillion. It, it has retreated sort of around about, you know, 150 sort of billion dollars, a little bit more, a little bit less, you know, give or take. But that's still pretty good. It's not far off a trillion dollars after we've had a fairly healthy correction. Again, 20 cent per correction, that's not too bad. We need this kind of thing. We can't just keep pumping up forever. All right, BTC dominance under 60%. ETH dominance has dropped. So that means altcoin dominance uh, is rising because the ETH dominance really is just the ETH. It's not all the alts. So that means people are getting into other coins. Now, ETH gas fees have come way down. I think a lot of that has to do with people just aren't using ETH as much because of the gas fees. So again, we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully all this layer 2 and ETH 2.0 comes out a lot quicker than we think. All right, so we can see there's still a bit of red about, um, particularly in the 24 hours. But let's have a look. Has anything pumped in the last 24 hours? I just got a notification that something was uh, doing not too bad. All right, so Polygon, I mean, look, it just continues to go. Matic, whatever you want to call it. ZK Swaps has recovered after its 70% drop. Voyager Token uh, recovering as well. Aave, very nice. Glad with that. I bought some Aave a while ago. I'm still down on where I bought it from. Monero, Compound, Engine. Uh, there we go, the graph. I just got a notification that the graph was up. Synthetics is up, so there we go. Now, these are very, very small gains, though, and we'll have to wait and see whether this is because we found the bottom or it's just a bit of a sort of dead cat bounce before we go another leg lower, because that is completely possible. Maybe 43,000 wasn't the bottom. All right, because that's really what we're all waiting for. It's all dependent on what Bitcoin does. If Bitcoin goes lower, the alts are going to go lower. In general, some will sort of buck the trend, but in general, alts will go lower. All right, what about what's gone down in the last 24 hours? What's continued the downtrend? All right, so MDEX, Huobi token, OKX, OKB, sorry, Pundex. Uh, again, had a really good pump, and now it's sold off. I mean, we can see these seven days. They're just kind of getting hammered. You know, BitTorrent, Terra, Crypto.com, Kasama. So that's really had a bit of a rough time. But look, these lows aren't too bad over 24 hours. These seven-day lows are definitely nothing pretty. But we had to see what they did in sort of the month before that. I'm going to say they probably did pretty good. So, you know, if you've lost 40% of 100% gains, you're still up 60%, so it's not the end of the world. It's just no good for people who bought the top. And again, I've spoken on this before. Hopefully they understand, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this whole, you know, the cycles and how cryptocurrencies works, and they're here for the long haul, and they're not just panic buyers and panic sellers because they'll just get totally wrecked and they'll be out in no time and they'll have lost a whole lot of money. All right, so let's move on. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So here we are. So we did get down, there we go, 45,000. So we still haven't come down. I thought we would get a candle close sort of somewhere down around here, around 43,000, 42,000. Now this still could roll over because this is now, so very early Monday morning. So it's 12.30 Sunday night over in the States. So leading into Monday morning. So in a couple of hours, We'll have to wait and see. Was this the correction? Was this what was required to bring us back to, you know, the good times? Right, let's have a look. 
So that is a 26% correction. So that's nothing to sort of cough at or sneeze at. That, that's a reasonable size correction. And it sort of played out over, well, there we go, a week. So not too bad. That's not to say this is it. This could be this. So we may still roll over and we may still come downwards. That's a complete possibility. And, and look, I don't really know. It's not like I have a crystal ball and I can tell. I just get the feeling like that might be it. There's been some uh, sort of buying pressure. And we're going to have a look at some of these stories that are going to make, you know, you possibly think what I'm thinking. And again, that's only my personal opinion. And it's all just based on time and the space. I don't claim to be a crypto expert. That's a pretty big call to say anyone's a crypto expert. But I do like to think I've been in it long enough. And I do have plenty of skin in the game. Uh, and yeah, I just think, I may know a thing or two. Again, you might think I don't. You might think I'm absolutely full of it. And that's fair enough. Let me know down in the comments below if you think I'm absolutely full of that. But personally, I think we may have found the bottom. This might be it. And we might start to find our way up from here. But I'm not discounting that we can't go lower. I'm just not sure we will. Again, this sort of married up pretty nicely with some of this. You know, we've had some confluence over here not that long ago. Only, you know, sort of three weeks ago. Do we have confluence over here? And this marries up pretty close with sort of this. Not exactly, but sort of thereabouts. It wasn't too far off. Time will tell. All right, so we've got some interesting stories. So Polkadot gears up for parachains launch and unveils common good parachains. Polkadot, the interoperable blockchain protocol spearheaded by Ethereum co-founder Gavin Wood, has announced its forthcoming parachain launch. Parachains applications, specific blockchains that connect to the main network and benefit from its security and computing capacity, are viewed as the building block of Polkadot's ecosystem. Initially, the plan was for 100 parachain slots, with an auction process determining who gets to lease parachains for, de for defined time periods. However, according to a blog post published by the team on February 25th, so that's only a few days ago, some slots will be made available for governance allocated parachains, also known as common good parachains. These common good parachains have been conceived to address the so-called free rider problem where parachains can forego contributing to elements such as bridges that may benefit the ecosystem as a whole. So this is big news for you know, polka dot, uh, and moving forwards, you know, there's been a whole lot of talk about parachains, but really we haven't sort of seen too much in, you know, in terms of those parachains, but it seems they are starting to move forwards. And I am bullish on polka dot, I'm bullish on Cardano, I'm bullish on Ethereum. I really do think, uh, someone on Cosmos, I need to see more from Cosmos, I have some, uh, I'll possibly buy more, but I just need to see some more from them. I haven't seen a whole lot from them at the moment but polka dot there's been a lot of projects and a lot of building on it and obviously cardano is going through a massive pump and ethereum i mean it's the number one but it just has to get these scaling solutions sorted so me i'm hedging my bets a little bit i've got skin in all the game i do think that they will all have a place provided there's nothing wrong with the with the code and all the rest of it there's you know no hiccups i think they will all have a place one is obviously going to be the big dog and leader uh, and the others will just have their own, you know, sort of little niche and sector. But that doesn't mean there won't be able to be big gains made in any one of them. Again, never financial advice, so that's just my personal opinion. You make your own decisions and you do you, as I do me. <laughs> All right, so moving on. And th again, this goes to lead to, you know, why I don't think we're going to have a whole lot more downside and while I don't think we're anywhere kind of near the top at the moment, I mean, you know, the top could come around about August, September, possibly, but I, I just think the way things are going at the moment, it might be a prolonged uh, bull market and it might push into next year. We're, we'll just have to wait and see. I, you know, I can't put my hand on my heart and say that is what's going to happen. It's just a thought process that I'm having. But here we go. So... Shark Tank's Kevin O'Leary reserves stance on Bitcoin, says crypto is here to stay, and he invests 3% of his portfolio into it. Now, Shark Tank star Kevin O'Leary, aka Mr. Wonderful, has begun investing in Bitcoin. So he's just getting in now at sort of 40,000, 50,000. Having previously called the cryptocurrency garbage, 
he has now changed his mind and believes that cryptocurrencies are here to stay. He is also getting used to the volatility of Bitcoin and believes that institutional investors are willing to hold through price fluctuations. Absolutely they are, they understand. And they likely understand that yes, you may have a brutal 70, 80% correction at some stage, but if you can just hold, if you got those hands of steel, in four to five years time, you're probably going to be a lot better off than wherever you are now getting in, including this 50,000. We may go through another bear market and Bitcoin may get down to something like, I don't know, 8,000, $10,000, maybe even $6,000. I don't think it's going to do that, but I could it, I could be wrong and it could get there. So let's say you buy now at, you know, we'll round it off, 47,000. It goes down to 6,000. That is going to hurt. Now, trust me, I've got an idea of that. I bought Bitcoin at $8,000 back in, in 2017. I watched it, I watched it go to nearly 20,000 and then I watched it drop all the way down to 3,000 and I rode it all through. I never sold. I still have that same Bitcoin now that I bought for $8,000 back in 2017, and it's worth 47,000. Now, I didn't have enough to even buy a whole Bitcoin, but again, I turned a couple of hundred dollars into a couple of thousand dollars. And then I watched that couple of thousand dollars turn into literally $300, and now that $300, again, still held it, it's back to being worth a couple of thousand dollars. It's more than what it was worth at the peak of the 2017 bull run. I just simply had to hold for long enough. So I've been around. I like to consider myself a bit of a, I'm not gonna say an OG, because I haven't been around in the space for you know that long, but I've been through a bull market, I've been through a bear market, and now I'm going through another bull market again. I can only give you my opinion, and that's why I do this. You know, I enjoy doing this for a start. I really do enjoy making content because as I'm making this content, I'm learning more about cryptocurrencies and just finances in general. And I want to be able to give people, you know, some information that I didn't have at the time because back in 2017, people hadn't really been through too many bull and bear markets. There are a couple of people, a couple of OGs, Da Vinci J, been around for a long time. He kind of knew what was happening, but pretty much anyone else on YouTube uh, other than Ivan Tech, uh, again, pretty much anyone. There was really Da Vinci J. He's what we can literally consider an OG. He's been around for a long time. And on YouTube, it was like the first kind of bull run for most people. Ivan on Tech, I think, had been through one previously, but he wasn't doing YouTube uh, back when all that started. But now... A lot of the people on YouTube, they've been through both a bull and a bear cycle. Some people are just, you know, brand new and have never been through anything other than, you know, this kind of bull cycle. So they don't understand how it works. And I'm not throwing shade on any YouTuber at all whatsoever. But just be careful with the information that you're taking on board. Make sure whoever's providing it to you has some insight and has been through previous cycles. Now they can say they have and you know possibly tell you fib and look you may think that i am uh that's totally your opinion but for me again i went through a bull run i just held i went through the, i held through the bear cycle i'm back in the next bull run and i'm up simply by holding but i did hold with bitcoin with some pretty good coins i didn't hold with really crap altcoins that just went to zero and look i'll be all i'll be honest i got a bit lucky with that that's all that was all right moving on so we got Shark Tank guy. He's now into Bitcoin and he was calling it garbage not that long ago. Google Finance Labs dedicated crypto tab featuring Bitcoin, Ether and Litecoin. Google Finance has added crypto prices to the financegoogle.com domain. The, settled, the section titled crypto now appears in the compare markets category alongside conventional stock and, crypt and currency markets. The section provides key pricing information in various cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Ether, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. So it is happening. It's now moving into mainstream. They would never have done this, uh, you know, only a few years ago, only really a few months ago. Well, I mean, obviously, because they've only just added it. But, you know, back in 2017 and that, there was no way they were going to add it and, you know, Google, which also owns, well, Alphabet sort of owns YouTube and that. They have been very cryptocurrency 
adverse at times. They're not completely against it, but they just were worried about the risks. But as it's becoming more accepted uh, and more mainstream, you know, there's less and less kind of strikes going against cryptocurrencies channels on YouTube now, you know, unless they really have stepped outside of, you know, whatever goal lines have been set. And I think a lot of it has to do with people just putting thumbs down on the channels and things like that, kind of reporting it because they don't like what they hear as opposed to, you know, Google really going through the videos. But again, I, I, I could be wrong, but I don't hear about as many now because it is suddenly becoming mainstream. This is legit. It's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Cryptocurrencies is at least part of the future of the financial system. Whether it will take over and dominate, time will have to, you know, time will tell. We'll have to wait and see. I personally think it's going to. I think, you know, we'll still have, you know, digital dollars and things like that. But the cryptocurrency space really is going to be the heart and soul of the financial system going ahead. Things like, you know, Ethereum, things like Polkadot, Cardano, Bitcoin and things like that. Now we have to wait and see. Nothing is guaranteed. I think Bitcoins are definite. Ethereum's looking likely, but whether Cardano, Polkadot and things like that have the power to stay, again, we'll have to wait and see. I, I think they do. I think they'll all be able to play a space and there'll be certain niches where they will do really well. And of course, someone's going to be the big dog and lead the way. Bitcoin is the, you know, it's the store of wealth. That's just the way it is. But Ethereum with its smart contracts and that, we'll have to wait and see whether it can hold that position because the gas fees are really hurting it at the moment. That ETH 2.0 needs to hurry up. Now let's move on. So something else that we talk about, adoption. So OLB Group enables crypto payments for thousands of US merchants. Small businesses can now accept cryptocurrency payments using OLB's point of sale technology. OLB Group, a New York-based e-commerce merchant service provider, is making it easier for businesses to accept cryptocurrency payments. OLB's more than 8,500 merchants are now able to accept Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDC, and DAI. This is good. DAI is finally being able to be used. At the point of sale through the company's Omnisoft business management platform. Customers wishing to pay with cryptocurrencies in store or through their mobile phones can simply elect to do so with their cryptocurrency wallets. All payments are processed through SecurePay, a payment gateway that authenticates the transaction, converts the cryptocurrency to US dollars and approves the final sale. The decision to integrate cryptocurrency payments was partly driven by the growth of contactless and online orders during COVID-19 pandemic. With the Omnisoft platform already providing merchants with several options to facilitate payments, cryptocurrencies were the next logical step. 100%. It is the next logical step. It is where we're going. Anyone who can't see that, you know, they either aren't looking or they just have their head in the sand and don't believe and don't want to, you know, they've got a thing against crypto and they haven't understood it yet. And it's that old, you know, ostrich head in the sand. No, it's not real. It's not going anywhere. It's all fake. It's going to zero. It, you know, some cryptocurrencies absolutely can and will go to zero. Bitcoin won't be one of them. That is literally the OG. It's here to stay. It will be that store of wealth. It is not going nowhere. All right. And again, have a look at this. This is, again, more bullish news. So, Beeple crashes marketplace by selling NFT art for $1. All right, NFT superstar Beeple crashed the crypto art boutique market uh, maker's place yesterday after traffic for his limited edition $1 drop led to system issues. Most of the 105 editions remain unsold. In a tweet, Marketplace has apologetic, apologetically explained that the website traffic at the time had completely exceeded its estimations, leading to a domino effect as the website went down and stayed down. So NFTs, they are really starting to blow up. Now, I don't know enough about art for me to go out and buy any. Uh, I know more about the actual, you know, the currencies themselves and the blockchain and that. But, you know, if you're an art sort of guru, I guess, or at least someone who knows a little bit about art, I think there's going to be some big money to be made in NFTs. I just don't know enough about art for me to really rush out and buy anything. It would have to be something that I see that, just really 
makes me feel like I want to go and do that. Like I've seen some Street Fighter stuff that looked pretty cool. That's more a bit of nostalgia and all the rest of it, you know. And they're going for a few hundred dollars, and I'm like, uh, that'd be like buying, you know, a a Street Fighter card or something for a few hundred dollars. You know, I'm not sure I would do that, you know, without it being an amazing nick. And I just really have to be a Street Fighter fan, and I do like Street Fighter. Don't get me wrong; it's one of my all-time favorite games i just i wasn't sure whether i'd want to want to spend a couple of hundred dollars on those as you know they could definitely go down and i don't know if street fighter is the thing that i want to get into it's like crypto kitties and all the rest of it now i could be completely wrong and they could be worth absolute tons of money in the future as they are kind of the first ones you know to be out there uh and so just that nostalgia into the future may make them worth a whole lot yeah i just i saw some for a the, and the ones that I like, kind of, you know, four or five hundred dollars, and I was like, oh, do I really want to spend four or five hundred dollars worth of Ethereum on these? I wasn't so sure, but look, again, that'll probably come back to bite me, uh, and that's just because of my, you know, lack of knowledge around the whole NFT space and art in general. All right, last but not least, crypto exchange INX to raise twenty five million and list on TSVX for added credibility. INX Limited, a cryptocurrency exchange that went public through a token offering on Ethereum in 2020, is looking to raise an additional 25 million in a new listing on the TX Venture Exchange. The company, which made history last year by uh, conducting an initial public offering or IPO on the Ethereum blockchain, said, Excuse me, it intends to list on the TSVXV for added credibility. INX said that the public Reporting and transparency required by the TSVX listing will help it attract Fortune 500 strategic partnerships and institutional investors. According to the filing, INX will offer 20 million shares priced at $1.25. All right, adoption is happening. Institutional investors, it is all starting to grow. And what is scary is that we are still oh so early. There is maybe 5% of institutions in Bitcoin at the moment. And don't get me wrong, they're buying up a ton of Bitcoin, but we're still waiting to see that 95% of institutions still to come. That is what is scary. Wait until they really start to come. And again, institutions are generally here before the wider public. So the wider public, well, it's not even the wider public, the public, the everyday mum and, da, mum and dad, Joe and Pop and all the rest of it, who are here now, they are early adopters. That's you. If you're in cryptocurrencies right now, you still are an early adopter. You're just not the earliest adopter. And look, that's just the way it goes with just about everything. Unless you were part of the cypherpunks, sorry, cyberpunks, you know, back in 2010 and all the rest of it, Da Vinci J and, you know, people who were mining it and, Oh, God, who else is there? Oh, there's a ton of people. The, the real OGs, Dan Held, oh, Tone Vase and all of that. You're not going to be one of the first, but you are still early. You're just not as early as others. Now, again, that's just my personal opinion, never financial advice, but I think there is massive upside from cryptocurrencies and a number of them, not just Bitcoin, a number of them into the future. I just don't know exactly which ones they're going to be. I've made my picks and I've talked about them plenty of times before. And now time will tell. Will there be uh, you know, more bull markets and bear markets? Absolutely. They're not going to stop anytime soon. Until Bitcoin has that real mass adoption, it's still going to fluctuate in price. And I think we're still maybe a cycle or two away from the big massive adoption i think a lot of companies that don't get in this time are going to wait for the low next time and i think that's when they're going to buy in so for me i'll be trying to do the same i've got some money on the side for when we do see you know the next bear market i'll be looking to get in uh whether it's into bitcoin or something else i don't know we'll have to wait and see time will hopefully give me an indication of where i would best uh, put my money and again you know if you want the real big gains it's in the altcoins but it's super risky that's the way it is so you know depending on how bitcoin does uh, i will hopefully buy uh, some more bitcoin at the bottom of the bear market i won't pick it exactly but you know thereabouts buy some more i won't wouldn't mind doing that 
and likewise other altcoins, altcoins that I think are here to stay uh, and have you know have legs. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully the bottom was in and it's all up from here. But hey, I could be wrong and there may be some more downside. I'll see you next time.